Okay, hi everyone. I'm going to talk about the 10 principles of economics. I'm going to talk about the first chapter, uh, which is the principle of economics of the books, the book of Gregory, Gregory Mankiw's book. Okay, first of all, before uh, talking about the, the 10 principles of economics, I'm going to talk about the origin of the word of economics. Economics can come from the the Greek word which is basically one who manages a household and as we think about a household we know that the household faces many decisions so for example even if they are not like like uh, initially as uh, initially as economics they are there are decisions so for example how takes who takes the pet the pet out who clean the dishes who play who pays bills or which TV channel the family watch all these characteristics they have something in common they all these facts depend on each member's abilities efforts and desire so all these important decision inside a household depends on each member and if we think about a household we can go beyond household and we will find society the, as we know society faces decisions as well so in order if we think about a society as a big household we know that there are different like specialization of each people so for example who will be in charge for food or who will ride a bike or a car or who will eat hamburgers or seafood so this is like the decision that we have in the interaction inside society inside the household so as we know this all these facts are important devoted to the naturality of scarce resources scarce resources what is scarcity is like producers cannot offer infinitely all resources as consumers because consumers cannot have all their wishes there is a limit from both parts so uh, uh, at the end we can define economics as the study of how society manages its scarce resources this is all economics is about how we can manage these kind of this kind of uh, particular resources so the principles of economics uh, Gregor Mankiw classifies in 10 so first people face trade-offs second the cost of something is what you give up to get it third rational people think at the margin fourth people respond to incentives fifth trade can make everyone better off sorry key sorry sorry here is like z is everyone and uh, markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity governments can sometimes improve market outcomes Eight, a country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. And nine, prices rise when the government prints too much money. And ten, society faces a short brand trade off between inflation and employment. We can apply, split, divide, split, we can divide these ten principles in three groups. The first group is about how people make decisions. The second group is from fifth to eighth point, which is all about how do people interact. And the last one from eight to ten is how the economy as as a whole works. So the first principle is people face trade trade-offs. So making decision requires trading off one goal against another so we can understand better this principle throughout examples so for example when you watch this YouTube, YouTube, YouTube video uh, you are sacrificing your time of watching another video more interesting maybe or what about if when, where, when parents they offer a great meal and this money could have been used in the cinema for example this is the trade-off the meal or the cinema we cannot have both in this case what about the government? If we think about a the government, they spend money in defense instead of a school. This is a trade-off. They cannot like equally or spend in one part without uh, without not spending to the other part. Or when you play FIFA, 
instead of playing Grand Theft Auto, you cannot play both same. Okay, or in party you dance with your sister, uh, but instead of the girl you like, this is a trade-off. I mean, you're dancing with one, but you're, you cannot dance with the other, uh, at least usually. It, it usually it uh, refers the trade-off. It refers to two important term terms in economics: efficiency and equity. So we can understand, we can grasp the efficiency of the size of the pie and equity is how is distributed okay so this is a trade-off we can have like a big pie and we can have a big slices maybe we can have like distribute the equity better but we, we are going to sacrifice the size of the cake the second principle is the cost of something is what you give up to get it so because people face trade-off making decisions requires comparing the costs and benefits of alternative courses of action so as example now you're watching this video the cost is time I mean you have a cost opportunity because you can fortunately cannot do another stuff or when you are having a free product we are going through soup to the shopping mall and you know there is a line you're wasting time in the line so this is the cost you think it's free you have to wait for that is time so we now introduce another important term in economics which is the opportunity cost which is whatever must be given up to obtain out some, some item so you are doing something but you're sacrificing maybe you can you, you could have done something at the same time so for example when you watch a soccer match when there is another at the same time supposedly you cannot split screen or you cannot divide that so you you just have focus your attention in one in one soccer match or what about the class that you don't like imagine that there is a class that you don't like as I said but so the, uh, the opportunity cost is so high because you can do something even sleeping even doing anything would be better than this class the third principle is about rational people think at the margin so your decisions are not usually in the stream points they are not black and white so we can say that our decisions they are more in the marginal changes so what about exercise and imagine that you exercise three times a week and you go jogging when you go jogging maybe you are thinking about jogging 50 minutes or 55 for one hour you're just like thinking about marginal changes you're not thinking about the big changes like i'm not gonna joke anything or I'm going to jump like for five hours what about eating you receive your lunch and maybe you you want more appetite so maybe you, you, you want another french fry or you want a little bit more rice or whatever so in this thing you're not thinking about zero eating and more on like five kilograms you are thinking more about maybe one one piece of the food more what about travel by car when you go by car you have to go like for, for 12 13 12, 13, uh, 13 hours, you are thinking about this marginal change, you are not thinking about zero hours of both four or 24 hours. So, this is the, the, the margin. And education, when you think about education, maybe you are thinking of uh, studying two years more, a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, but you are not thinking about not studying and becoming just uh, illiterate or maybe a PhD program. You are thinking about just like how it's important to change one one year one year more of education we can understand a little bit more about margin about the cost of an airplane so what about this airplane we have this airplane suppose that we have 200 seat plane and the cost of the trip for the company is one hundred thousand dollars but uh, if we divide these two numbers we can find the average cost once we have the average cost, we can imagine that the plane is to take off, and there are just ten seats, and there are ten seats available. So, so the airplane is, is going to take off, but there is one guy. This guy is willing to pay three hundred dollars. So, what do the company do? What does the company do? In this case, it's profitable for the airplane to leave this guy to go to to get on the airplane so in this case thinking about marginal cost what is the cost of this new guy 
It's just maybe peanuts, some snacks, some water that the man is going to demand. So it's no more than that. So maybe the marginal cost is profitable and we can think about allowing the guy to enter to the airplane. The fourth principle is about people respond to incentives. So people make decisions by comparing costs and benefits. The behavior may, may change when the costs or benefits change. So as example, what about if a price of some good goes down? When the, the price goes down, maybe people have more incentive to buy this good. And what about the tolls for cars in the cities? When we have this kind of price that we have to pay in order to go downtown, we have incentive to go by bike, to go by public transportation, to go by feed, I don't know, by food, whatever. Uh, what about the discount museums and science when we have this kind of discounts? Maybe people are tempted um, are tempted to go to the museum because they have the incentive because they are, they are free this day. What about if your dog shit in the public garden? Maybe uh, there is no incentive to pick it up because no one says anything. But there is no any fee that you have to pay. But if there is like a really strong rule, maybe there is the incentive of not doing that. Or imagine the quest that we have a topic crash in the exam. So we have this topic, maybe people they are so incentive to go them to this class and paying a lot of attention. The fifth principle is about trade can make everyone better off. The trade basically allows each people to specialize in the activities he or she does best and to enjoy the variety of goods and services at lower cost. So as example my country Colombia we are like we are more specialized in coffee because we are best at doing coffee but Japan is the best in automotive sector so they're going to specialize in these in this particular sector what about we think about Tiger Woods in golf maybe the man is good like cutting the grass in his house but it's better that he specializes in golf because the profit on the earns they are much more bigger than the other part what about Jaime Rodriguez in soccer the man has an outstanding talent, so maybe he's like the best in doing that. So he has to practice this, which is like the part of specialize him. What about me in economics? Well, absolutely, I'm not the best, but I can say that I that I know a little bit about the topic. So, so it could be like for me, it would be better doing that than maybe like making the laundry okay maybe I'm not best doing that so the sixth is about markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity in this part regular Marcus Dr. regular Marcus he talks about the communism and how this central plan which they talk about how the government they realize and they choose how many goods, how many services and, on, and at which price they're going to be in the market. So in the Soviet uh, and old communism is practically out um, and one of the chain principles like the market economy that allocates resources to the decentralized decisions of many firms and households as they interact with markets for goods and services. So in this part the prices and self-interest guided the decisions. As we know like for example the firms they decided to how, how many they're going to produce and the households they decide where they're going to work and people decide what to buy so this is the market as usually works allocate all resources in the best way so the seventh is like the governments can sometimes improve market outcomes so there are two reasons to intervene in economics so for example there is efficiency and equity so efficiency remember is the big the size of the 
cake and equity is how we split it and what are market failures so one of the market failures most popular is the externality so we know that the externality is the impact of one person's action on the well-being of another person and the example in this case is like invasion when someone invents something the government they have the duty to protect this invention for a certain quantity of time so this is like how the government improve this market outcome because otherwise someone will will copy his her invention so what about the noise for your neighbor maybe if there is not there is no rule about that there is no payment maybe you don't have like in this case uh, the uh, I must say that the outcome is going to be that your neighbor they're going to party every single day but how the government they can or uh, it can regulate in sort of way this stuff they're going to make a tariff or something the neighbor they're not going to do anymore and when there is monopoly, there is just a company who produces and sell one good or service. The government they can regulate this this market because there is something market power of this company in order to offer a better results for all society. And in equity, maybe we just like leave the market to the market economy. We will find that there will be still people starving. There will be still people having problems. So in this way, it's better to sacrifice a little bit about efficiency to have more to, for uh, more equity. So the eighth part is country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services citizens of high-income countries have more TV sets, more car, better nutrition, better health care almost all variation of living standards is attributable to differences in countries productivities but we can see here this electricity graph when we have the gross domestic product which is the GDP per capita so how of the total of the production of the company sorry of the country it belongs to each citizens and we can see here United States and Colombia unfortunately for Colombia we see like this is like ooh, like five times less than the United States uh, GDP per capita which is around five fifty thousand dollar fifty uh, fifty thousand dollars and in the case of Colombia it's around ten thousand dollars so we can see how the production depends on the makes like better quality of life in general uh, the ninth part is about prices rise when the government prints too much money so when we have too much money economy we have the with the so-called inflation inflation is an increase in the overall level of prices in the economy so we know that the growth of the quantity in the economy of the of the money we can know that where is there is when there is too much money the price of this money is still lower so for example when we have like much more people with more and more money with just one one dollar I cannot buy the same thing that I had before so it depends on the quantity of money and the last one is society faces a short run trade-off between inflation and employment so we know that inflation for many countries is primordial activity of their economy but why is why so hard to control it because there is a relation with there is a temporary unemployment rise which is called the Phillips curve what does it say it says it's basically the prices are low to adjust okay so imagine for example that the government produces the quantity of money in the economy so people in average they don't have less money than before so in this case they won't buy uh, more so they will have lower in sales once we have lower sales the firms they have to lay off workers until the prices adjust which we talk about prices adjustment after the short run so it will be like the medium um, run or the long run so that that's it if that's everything I hope you like it I hope you it would be useful for you I will continue with book of my queue.
and that's it thank you for watching my video and have a great time with your economics see you bye bye